I'm going to draw several isotopes of carbon. And isotopes is kind of a funny sounding word. And it just so happens in nature that there are different, uh, or that every type of atom, whether it's hydrogen or helium or carbon, there are atoms that have different numbers of neutrons, even though they essentially are the same atom. And that's exactly what we mean by isotopes. And I'm going to, when we talk about isotopes, we can't just say the word isotope. We would have to say either isotopes of carbon, isotopes of hydrogen, or isotopes of oxygen. So I'm going to draw several isotopes of carbon. And we would write these as carbon-12. Or the symbol for carbon-12, we would have a 12 written up in the left-hand corner of the symbol for carbon. And then the 6 would be written here. Carbon-13 would be written as carbon-13 or even C-13. And the symbol for carbon-13 We'd have a 13 up in the left-hand corner of carbon, and again we would have a 6. Then we're going to look at one more isotope, and that's carbon-14. That is the carbon that's used for carbon dating. Uh, carbon-14 is radioactive, and uh, so we're going to see that the difference between carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 is the number of neutrons each one of those atoms have. If we look at the periodic table for carbon, carbon is element number six, and the atomic number is always the number of protons. So we always know how many protons any atom has. And this number up in the left-hand corner here is called a mass number. So whether it's written here or here, that number is not going to be on the periodic table. In fact, the only time we would care about a mass number is when we are specifically talking about one particular isotope. And the mass number, if you look on the class notes, you'll see the definition of that. That is always the protons plus the neutrons. So if I put that over here, if this number represents the protons and the neutrons, and the atomic number represents the number of protons, then if we subtract this number, the atomic number, from the mass number, that will give us the number of neutrons. So carbon-12, because it has to have six protons to be carbon, we can do the math and calculate that carbon-12 has six neutrons. Carbon-13 has an extra neutron, or it has seven neutrons. And carbon-14, because 14 minus six is eight, we know that an atom of carbon-14 has eight neutrons. So you can see this in your book or on the on page 9 of the class notes. And what I'm going to ask us to do is just to be able to look at any isotope <coughs> excuse me, and say how many protons, neutrons, and electrons that particular atom would have. So carbon-12 has six neutrons, six protons, and the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So in an atom that's neutral, protons is always equal to the number of electrons. So this carbon also has six protons and six electrons. And this carbon also has six protons and six electrons. If we take a sample of carbon, like a lump of coal, a sample of carbon has all the isotopes in it. So after chapter 4, we aren't going to care about isotopes again. But because for some reason in nature, atoms of the same type can have different numbers of neutrons, 
and neutrons as part of what constitutes an atom, we are going to care about the concept of isotopes. Hydrogen also has several different isotopes. And so if I move down here and draw the isotopes of hydrogen, Hydrogen, if we look on the periodic table, is element number one. So hydrogen always has one proton. And the most common form of hydrogen is this form here with zero neutrons. Sometimes we'll call the hydrogen two, we'll call this heavy hydrogen because the one proton and the one neutron because a neutron weighs as much as a proton, this atom of hydrogen is going to weigh twice as much as this one. And again, the atomic number is down here. And then tritium is radioactive. And an atom of tritium would have two neutrons. And if we just have a sample of hydrogen, we could uh, write that the atom hydrogen would just be an H. And if we care about which isotope we have, that's the only time we would see a symbol here. So again, that shows that we are looking at one particular isotope. So the mass number is here. The atomic number really doesn't have to be written because every periodic table shows that atomic number, the number of protons. And again, when we subtract the atomic number from the mass number, the difference is always the number of neutrons. So neutrons just add mass or weight. Neutrons do not change the reactivity of any atom. On the next slide, we're going to look at the class notes and just be reminded of that. And again, what we want to make sure we can do for any isotope symbol is just state how many protons, neutrons, and electrons that particular isotope has.